Hi everyone, my name is Anil. Uh, in this video, we will talk about how do you uh, perform a data replication between ServiceNow and Snowflake. So here the idea is we are trying to read data from ServiceNow and load into Snowflake database. Uh, so to perform this integration, uh, there are some steps you have to uh, do as, as part of the, the initial setup. So these are all mentioned here. The first step is to install Python. Uh, so I have used 3.7.4 uh, to work with uh, this version of Snowflake. So you need to check the compatible version and then install the Python version accordingly. So while you are installing Python, you need to ensure that the path is set. Uh, basically, as part of the installer, uh, you have to check the checkbox called set path so that the environment variables are all correctly set up uh, for this to work correctly. And once that is done, you will install a library called uh, Snowflake Connector uh, Python. Uh, and that is done using the uh, PIP utility. Uh, and generally, whenever you use PIP utility, utility you have to ensure that you upgrade it first so that you always use the latest one right and sometimes you may get error when you're trying to in install this library so when you do that when you get the error then you can try using this command dot slash pip and, and see if that helps right uh, and if you want to learn more about the python connector for snowflake uh, then this is the documentation link for that so that completes the setup required uh, to enable uh, connection between Python and Snowflake. Uh, the next step is to install uh, ServiceNav uh, libraries uh, on Python. So that then for that you use this command pip install ServiceNav. And all this will be done on uh, uh, mid-server. The mid-server VM is where you will install Python uh, and all these libraries. Right. So once all this is done, the initial setup, then the next step is to actually execute the program, uh, which will uh, do the load, which will read the data from ServiceNav and load into uh, Snowflake. So the Python program does two things. The first one it will do is it will read data from ServiceNow using REST API. Uh, so we have to do the required setup in terms of uh, configuring the endpoint URL, the query which it has to use to query database ServiceNow data, and then the table to which uh, it is going to run the query and all and the credentials, all of that. We have to do that setup. And then similarly on the service on the Snowflake side, uh, uh, for the Snow for Python to connect to Snowflake, you have to set up the connection. Uh, attributes uh, in Python right uh, so I'll first demonstrate how the, the the program functions and then I'll also do a walkthrough of the program uh, snow on, on snowflake uh, I have set up a database and a table by name incident that is a target for this uh, data right so we will be loading data into this table uh, currently the table has uh, no records I just ran a truncate on this table so that uh, all the records are deleted and now when they run the program, I'll be able to uh, load data into this table. And on ServiceNow side, uh, this is the source table, the incident table, where I'm reading the data from here, and I'm trying to load that into this table here. Uh, so to run the program, I'll be using this command, Python, and then the program name. Uh, once it completes, uh, it will return the command uh, prompt back. Uh, that, that way I'll know that the program is complete and at that point I'll go and check Snowflake uh, table to see if there's any data in it. Uh, currently I have put a row lim the, the row limit count as 1000 so it, it retrieves 1000 records from ServiceNow and loads into uh, Snowflake. So now the program is complete so let's check uh, Snowflake database. So here I'll first run a count again. So you can see that there are 1000 records. Now we'll run a select star so we can read the data. Uh, so you can see that uh, all the records have come here uh, with incident number, uh, category, and so on. So I mean, there is some. I mean, if you have null records on service node, then you'll have same null values coming up on uh, Snowflake also. Uh, and this is a short description for the records which have short description on them, right? So we can compare one record in service now to validate that data is accurate. Uh, so I'll pick up this incident number and search here. So this is a short description. This is a number. I can also check the category. So which is uh, software. Uh, and yeah, so the short description, uh, category, and the number. They're all matching in uh, the Snowflake side. right? What you're seeing here is matching what you see on service side. So this is how the integration functions. 
now I'll do a walkthrough of the code. So as you can see here, uh, this is the Python script that is doing the work. So now I'll we have I have created like a lot of definitions within the script. I'll walk uh, through each of them. Uh, the first one is to build the URL. Uh, so basically here I'm passing the instance name, uh, the API, the table, query, and limit. Uh, and based on using that, it it builds a URL which will be my uh, REST endpoint, right? So the instance name, API table, query and limit. Uh, the next one is uh, to collect the to actually make the REST call, uh, and this is a function that does it. It basically returns uh, the response JSON, uh, and this res response JSON is being used uh, uh, to collect uh, the columns which I need right so we have number category subcategory short description so I'm collecting these four columns so uh, that is being done by this uh, for loop here where it is reading each row in the response and it's trying to process them now uh, to make this uh, processing dynamic uh, uh, this array has been created with a list of columns and each column it is uh, looking at uh, the data and then it is building a, a, a data I mean the the string in a format which will be used by the snowflake uh, query right and in that process it is also replacing uh, some of the uh, characters uh, uh, which will cause uh, issues uh, like for example if there's a comma or a single quote or a double quote then they may uh, break the snowflake uh, side of things uh, in terms of uh, the execution that is where we are replacing all of them with a space and once this is done uh, basically you'll have uh, 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 rows of data which are ready to be inserted into snowflake now once that is done then uh, we will uh, make a connection to the snowflake database uh, this is the account this is the session parameters username credentials and then there's a table name uh, and then this is the connection execution for the session the warehouse database all of that and and then once we have all of them here, uh, this is where I'm building the SQL query, which basically is doing an insert into the table uh, with a list of columns uh, and then the values, uh, which is being sent as part of the row set, which uh, uh, is nothing but the data we retrieved from ServiceNow. Uh, so once we have all of this ready, then we will run the execute command so that the SQL query is executed. And, and then we have seen the output where, where basically the incident table on the Snowflake side will get the data. So that's how this integration works. Uh, so now we, we can also expand this integration uh, in such a way that uh, we can run this uh, program directly uh, using a script from ServiceNow. Uh, so right now this I'm executing this manually, but I can also invoke this uh, script uh, via mid server command, right? Uh, so that, that, that way this all will become an automated uh, way of uh, uh, reading data from ServiceNow and loading into Snowflake. Thank you for watching. This is Anil.